General Walls, could we just have a... Hello, Ian. Yes, thank you. <coughs> you please to take your questions from the floor. Be grateful if when you put your questions, you give your name. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your interest. Um, and I thank you for taking the trouble to come along, which surprises me slightly because uh, I think the retirement of old generals is an evolutionary process which happens in all sorts of places. Um, you have got bits of paper, or you can get them, which I think give the details of my service. Um, so I imagine that uh, you don't really want me to cover things like that. But there are one or two points which I'd like to make as a result of things I've heard or reports I've received of what news media statements have been made. I'd like to just clear up one or two things. In some cases, I believe it's been stated that I have resigned. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like to explain to you that in the armed forces, uh, resignation means that a member or an officer is on the first part of his army career, he's on his initial engagement or on a medium service engagement, and he hasn't yet earned the entitlement to retire. Uh, once uh, an officer or member has fulfilled his initial part of his engagement, and become eligible to retire on a full pension, he doesn't resign, he retires when he gives notice of his desire to do so. Uh, I could have retired in 1963 when the Federation broke up. Uh, as I continued to serve in this country, I was eligible to retire on a full pension, including my war service, in 1968, and at any time after that I could have retired. In fact, as the bit of paper makes clear, I would have been due to retire in 1976 after serving the four statutory years as Army Commander. Uh, so this is a retirement, ladies and gentlemen. By no means have I resigned. The next point I'd like to clear up is that I own or rent no properties anywhere outside this country. I don't own or rent a single square inch of property outside Zimbabwe. And that is the fact of the matter. I understand there are reports that I have large blocks of flats here, there and everywhere. I wish to goodness they were true, uh, but they simply aren't. Uh, so I won't be, uh, there's no property that I own to retire to outside the pro uh, country. Secondly, while we're here, may I take the opportunity of saying that whilst the news media have been pretty fair to me uh, over years of my service, particularly when I've been in a more prominent sort of post, in recent months there have been one or two statements which are just untrue. And uh, I think I'd like to take this opportunity of saying that whilst I think the news media have the absolute right to state any adverse comment or opinion they might have about any person or any place, or any group or any country, I don't believe they have the right to say something happened if it never happened. And ladies and gentlemen, I never attended a mutinous assembly or a riotous group of soldiers or any kind of group that didn't behave in the normal way that soldiers have behaved throughout my service. It just never happened at the Salu Scouts or anywhere else. I know the Guardian and other newspapers said it happened. It just didn't. That was a straight lie, because it did not ever take place. In the same way, I never had 30 pieces of silver thrown at me. It just didn't happen, ladies and gentlemen. It was a lie. And I believe lies like that are unfair to the country, to the forces, and I believe they were unfair to me and damaging. Uh, the next point I'd like to make is that personalities don't come into the way we run things in the Joint High Command. Mm -hmm. They never have come into uh, service matters as far as I'm concerned. One of the things I've learnt in 36 years of soldiering is that you get on with the people that you serve with. 
those who are superior in rank to you, those who are subordinates, those who are colleagues with whom you're working, and therefore any suggestion that uh, there have been personality clashes or that I have chosen to retire, which I've been trying to do for several years, uh, that I've chosen to retire now because of any personalities is quite wrong. We have a good, strong, broadly based team in the Joint High Command. Uh, there are officers and representatives from the former Rhodesian Army, General McLean and his subordinates, uh, from the former Rhodesian Air Force, now to be known as the Air Force of Zimbabwe, uh, from Zandler and from Zipra. We have staffs serving us. We have melded ourselves into a team that gets along pretty well. And, uh, you know, when you bear in mind that uh, we came from pretty different backgrounds and we'd been fighting each other and trying to kill each other not really long ago, I think it's quite remarkable the spirit and atmosphere which exists in the Joint High Command. Uh, sure, personalities disagree, uh, and uh, there can be all sorts of friction at times, as in any outfit. But I believe that the Joint High Command is a broadly based, strong team of chaps who are working for this country. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. May I take any questions you'd like to offer? Appears that way, because I think, uh, I think that anybody looking at the facts would get a different picture. I think that story of my career on the bit of paper you have explains that I should have retired in 1976. The government of the day asked me to stay on. The job went on and on until, in fact, uh, it folded up just after the elections were over when combined operations had no further need to exist. At that time, I would have loved to have retired. The present Prime Minister asked me if I would stay on for a little bit longer to help with the amalgamation or integration process. I agreed to do so, but said that I very strongly believe that quite apart from the effect on me as an individual, uh, that it's bad for forces or armies anywhere to have one chap at the top for too long. I was deputy commander of the army in 1968. I became the commander of the army in uh, mid-1972. And therefore, for eight years, I've been either commanding the army or when combined operations was formed, I was at the top post coordinating the operational functions and activities of all the security forces. That's a long time, ladies and gentlemen, and I honestly believe that I have the right to retire and go and do something else, have a long holiday to start with. You know, I haven't had uh, uh, a long leave since 1968, as far as I recall. Um, I think that it's reasonable to retire now, and also I have made no decision to leave the country. I'm going to go on a holiday, sure, I've said that. When I come back from the holiday, I will come to my home in this country. I have no property in any other country. To complete my 36 years service uh, in October. Um, I'm in pretty good health, thank you. I think I'm pretty fit too. Uh, it's true that I had pleurisy, uh, I think about six weeks or two months ago, and recently I was one of the victims of this strain of flu, which uh, is known by various names, I understand, JR, flu, Dallas, Texas, Russian, etc. Uh, I was told I'd have to go to bed because I got the strain of flu, which made uh, me, I was in quite a bit of pain. Uh, and I was oh, I feel sometimes I would like to stay on. Uh, but sometime or other you have to say, well, there's the dividing line where other people should carry on. Uh, because if I stay till the end of the year, I think there's a very good chance the uh, biggest part, if not all, of the integration exercise will have been completed. This does depend on accommodation problems and finance. Perhaps we can come back to that. But the biggest part of it will be done. Uh, but then there will be other problems. There will be the training of the new forces, uh, the continuation training. There will be other problems. 
and uh, I would want to get stuck into them as well. And I believe that now that we've got this thing on the road, we really are progressing at a reasonable rate. In fact, I'm very satisfied with the way it's going at the moment, and therefore I think it can carry on as, without me. I have been seeing the overcoming of the problems which has made me feel that uh, it's okay for me to retire now and uh, the Prime Minister has kindly agreed that that is so. He, he agrees that we've overcome most of the problems. The integration exercise did not go as quickly as people would have liked it to go. I never expected it to go any quicker than it did because there were massive problems to be overcome. If you consider that here you had, leaving aside the Air Force for the moment, you had three armies who'd been at each other's throats. We'd been fighting each other, trying to kill each other. The, I'm told that it's confirmed by Zandler and Zipra, colleagues of mine now, that Zandler and Zipra didn't get on all that well anyway. And uh, attempts that were made previously to amalgamate them into one army did not succeed. Uh, so, uh, if you bear in mind that that was the background, then the fact that we had an election when all sorts of emotions were stirred up and all sorts of claims and counterclaims were made, and then you put together people with these vastly different backgrounds, you can't expect things to go quickly. The former Rhodesian forces were completely apolitical. They were brought up in that tradition. The Zipra forces had a different code of discipline and conduct to that in Zandler. But they were politically minded. They were in support of a political cause. The Zandler forces were much more so uh, politically minded and in support of a political cause. And they are now having to be weaned away from years of training and uh, encouragement to support a party political cause. The Prime Minister has ruled that the government policy is that there is no, to be no politics in the defence force of the future. Now these people have to get used to this concept and one must give them time to do it. You can't expect it to be accepted overnight. Uh, the, the former security forces had a code of discipline. They had the discipline regulations. They had the Defence Act and all the other printed laws and regulations of the land. Zipra and Zandler did not have these. So it was agreed by us as a sort of a consensus of agreement that we would uh, use as a temporary measure the Defence Act and the regulations which pertained to the former forces. Now it took a bit of time for Zandler and Zipra to get used to these. Not only did it take time for them to get used to them, but it took time to distribute copies of the stuff and for them to study it and learn what it all meant. So obviously a month or two were going to go by while people with the best will in the world got used to this new way of living. It's where this machine is turning out damn good material, ladies and gentlemen. Together. They've been sorted, selected, given new temporary appointments. They have married up with the personnel from the cadres, uh, as Zan and Zipra call them, uh, and from other places, and they've started forming battalions which are coming off the production line at the rate of one a fortnight. Every two weeks we turn out another thousand or so men completely integrated, completely used to the system of working on these temporary regulations and so on, uh, used to the idea of being apolitical, used to the idea of rigid discipline, a command system which varied with, between the three forces, we have made progress. A long time ago that I would like to retire. Uh, I think it's about time I made a move anyway, you know, if I can be light-hearted for a moment. Any chap in the army who's been eight years in his present rank without getting anywhere could consider himself to be a failure, and I think it's time I tried something else. But uh, I suppose it was about the end of May when I began to see things going more smoothly. Uh, I told the Prime Minister that I would like to proceed on leave pending retirement uh, somewhere around the end of June or the end of July. I told him this at the beginning of June, in fact on the 4th of June, uh, at his house. You haven't offered me anything if that's any... If, uh, if that clears that one up.
Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether it's true that they've offered these substantial contracts uh, or whether there's been any come on. Big pardon? Wasn't it? Oh, well, then it might be true. Um, <laughs> No, I, I don't know. I have seen statements by people in South Africa to say that they have considered applications from people to join their forces, but they haven't had as many as perhaps they'd like to have had. I know certainly some have gone to Britain, some have gone to America, others, and they've gone, they've gone to other countries, but I wouldn't say very many have gone to forces in other countries anyway. It's very difficult for me to give advice to a young chap in the forces. I personally have enjoyed my career in the forces and uh, any chap who's in the forces now has got the way wide open to enjoying a very satisfying career in front of him. We have uh, we have two or is it three fully integrated battalions on the ground but it's difficult to answer this because we are also integrating people in existing battalions uh, of all three forces. So I'm talking about uh, integrated battalions that have come out of this machine of ours. But um, at this stage, uh, it's, it's either two on the ground with the third just forming, uh, or it's actually three on the ground. I'm, I'm not quite sure where we've reached, because they are going through this sausage machine uh, of standardization training leadership training, joining up with the troops, establishment of the battalion, battalion training, specialist training at the same time, all these things are happening concurrently. We haven't got many on the ground yet, but the point is that the process is underway and going fast. Uh, sorry, what was, Tony, what was the second? In his capacity as Minister of Defence and as Prime Minister, I think it's the sort of decision that the Prime Minister would make even if he wasn't Minister of Defence. He will say who is to act for me while I'm on leave, or he may well appoint a successor to come in when I go on leave. That's entirely his prerogative, and it's up to him to make the announcement about it. It can be a good army, it will have good training, it will have magnificent expertise behind it. I mean, one of the, uh, one of the bits of value of having people joining together from three different armies is that uh, all of us were bang up to date uh, as far as practice and methods was concerned. And we're sharing our knowledge and our uh, experiences now. And uh, it's, it really is quite, quite uh, exhilarating, I think, to put together the ideas that come from these three different sides, especially when you can compare notes on well, what happened when the different methods were employed. I believe that we should be an army uh, which this country can be proud of. It will rank with any in the world. Uh, equipment, we've got the equipment which belonged to the former forces, the equipment from Zandla and the equipment from Zipra, all being put together. Be a good army. Or oh. conventional brigade groups and another brigade group which will look after what we call Operation SEED. I think you probably know SEED stands for soldiers employed in economic duties, uh, people who are uh, engaged in agricultural projects whilst they're waiting their turn to come into the conventional army. Um, that gives you some idea of the shape and size we're looking at. The numbers integrated at the present time must run into several a few thousand, but I couldn't tell you what it is because uh, throughout the various services and corps of the future army, people have already started getting together. And you've got people uh, who have armoured experience, you've got people with engineer experience, signallers already working together, some have been over to Britain on courses and come back again. Uh, tomorrow we've got a, a group leaving for a staff college course in Britain. Uh, Order at the present moment, but you should direct any questions about that to the Commissioner of Police or to the Ministry of Law and Order. It's solely their responsibility to deal with this. Uh, it is the Prime Minister's policy and uh, the one that we've obviously implemented from the Joint High Command that soldiers from the uh, National Army are deployed in support of the police when they request it. Uh, so yes, there is a threat to Lord Aura because we have some people who are uh, committing crimes or 
uh, what have you, in various parts of the country. It's not restricted to any one group of people.